Now, we're looking at fall. That Subway sandwich is just yelling at me. You guys ready for a break? We're, we're talking about, we'll talk about early fall. Now, when early fall comes around, what starts happening to this flat? The water surface temperature starts to do what? Starts to cool off. We're going to start getting back up on this dude. We want to get back up on this flat to feed. Reason being is it's the sun is at a different angle, which is coming up, and how it affects it. But it's starting to cool up here. And they want to get back up in here to feed, so they'll start to concentrate again. Now, as fall progresses, what is there starting to become a lack of in the water? Forage. Forage. Things have been eaten. Things have died. So all of a sudden, we're getting to be real opportunistic again. Hence, big swim baits at night catching the walleyes. They're wanting... Your fall period? The fall period, you're going to start for us. Jimbo, when you went up and they were getting all them leeches up there at Kettle, remember that you went up and had? That was about second week in September. Mm -hmm. That's about roughly the time. Down lower, it may be end of September. Maybe end of September. Water temperature, it's just basically going to happen, guys. It's going to be a lot... And a lot of these movements, they take place with temperature, obviously. But you notice how the light's starting to get longer? That has a lot to do with triggering fish. It is temperature, but when the days start to get shorter, when the days start to get shorter, vegetation starts to die off. Things start to die off because there's less uh, photosynthesis taking place in the, in the water with the weeds and stuff. Well, as the days get longer in the springtime, that also triggers them. So usually, for us, say about the end of September, we start thinking about, all right, it's time to go again. It's fishing hard. And as it progresses all the way up until around 45 degrees, you're going to go out, you're going to catch them at night. You're going to catch them trolling flats, overcast days, up shallow. And they're going to stay there. And they're going to eat like crazy because they're preparing for that winter time coming up. And because there's not a lot of forage in the water, they're eating everything, everything they can get their hands on. Now, when the water temperature hits 50, what starts to happen to it? it starts to sink, right? When you hit that turnover period, which is the end of fall, when that water gets down, you know, 42, 40 degrees, getting that 39 mark, then we get this thing of where'd they go? Because they're now running top to bottom. They're starting to go okay, we've got oxygen all the way around, they're moving all over the place. So you're going to go through a peak there where it's hard again. Once that surface temperature gets colder than the 39, then you know you're going to start to find them again steadily at that 40 to 60 mark. And they're going to spend all winter there. So once you find them, that's where they're going to live at. They're cold blooded. They don't want to swim around a bunch. They want to make little movements. So they'll be back right to where they started at. Stay all winter? Stay there all winter. As I said, if it gets sunny, they'll push up. They'll push up shallow. But it's that 40 to 60 mark. And to complicate things, guys, on the reservoirs, they're doing what? Dropping water, raising water. I mean, there's, there's a lot of other things that can mess it up. But that's pretty much a consistent that you're going to find for your seasons. Any quick questions on the seasons, guys, before I destroy that sandwich? Uh, what, what about uh, um, this year? We're probably going to have one massive runoff. Um, so is that probably going to affect uh, some of these depths, probably? Normal? Well, yeah, it'll not depend. It'll, they may not be able to get with the spawners, guys. They'll go right back to the spot where they did it before year after year after year. Kind of like a salmon or steelhead. Well, they'll go back to that same spot. And what may happen with the runoff is they're going to drop it way down. If they drop it way down, they sense that they can't get to where they need to be, they'll hold up. And you'll find them in the deep pools before where they can get up into the shallows. You know, as you head up the river and you get up to five, it starts to get tricky at five. It gets big and flat in there. If you don't have much water in there, you're going to go down to the next deepest spot that's adjacent to a flat, and that's where you're going to find them at. They're going to wait there. 
when the water comes up and starts running, they may not be able to make it all the way to where they once more were. So they may have to stop a little short. If you have it bad enough, and you have a series of cold fronts come in over and over again, Jim, you were catching walleyes in July that still had what in them? Eggs. Reason being, last year, guys, is one of the toughest springs I've ever had. All I hooked was that big Canadian goose. We hooked one on a blade bait, Mick and I did, after fishing hard. It was probably a 14-pounder, and we fished hard for it. And it, we got, got it up, we saw it in the camera, and it swam down, and it came off, and everybody was happy, and we cheered and high-fived. But it was tough. And in years like that, the females will absorb the eggs back. They won't even make the effort. They'll absorb them. That's why it's critical to let them go. If you have one or two years where that happens, what happens? You start cutting down your fish. So when you're seeing eggs in them like that, odds are, which it was a bad year last year, they just absorbed them. The, the arm got muddied up, then they filled it up, and they just didn't go any further. I mean, it was like they were impossible to find. And odds are, a lot of those fish just absorbed their eggs and said, well, wait till next year. So it's something to remember. Oh, one more quick question. Okay. Do, they, do these groups, or you might call them pods, mm -hmm. do they basically stay... Some pods stay in one area or Yeah, when they come down when they come down and migrate out for the you know post spawn period into the summer period, a biggest percentage of your fish are gonna go back out into Roosevelt. They're gonna go back out into the main reservoir and they're gonna take up the rest of the, the year there. But there are natives that stay in the arm, that stay in Blue Creek areas. If there's enough depth there in flats, which there are, that's you know, that arm in itself is huge. They'll stay there. They are residents that will stay there. But your biggest percentage of fish are going to push down and work their way back out into the reservoir. Guys, these, the walleye will travel up to 50 miles for their spawn. We've caught them up in the arm with tags from Nelson, B.C. It's a long ways. They will cruise. Reservoir fish, whether it's bass, whether it's walleye, they're some of the hardest fish to catch because they're always on the move, unless it's like this time of the year, or you've got the ideal flat. Maybe you know this spot here on my GPS I know is good in winter, in those cold water times, and maybe I have another spot I know when they come down and they go early summer, they're going to live here. And you just have to work those spots and you work them as you're going back out. And you can follow them back out to the mouth the same fashion you followed them in but they're going to be moving a lot quicker. You may hit a good group here, and the next day you go, there's nothing, you don't mark nothing, you're eight, nine miles down the river. Reservoir fish always moving. That's what makes them tough.